Hello and welcome to my blog. Last year I developed a solution to work with WVD. It's called WVD Admin and I'm happy to show you how easy it is to install and use WVD Admin. I will make some records showing you different aspects what you can do with WVD Admin. Let us start installing WVD Admin and make the first configuration to use it in your environment. You can find WVD Admin on my blog. And there is always the newest solution, the newest download on top. The news is from today, from January the 7th. And I downloaded it already. And if I try to start it, you will see that you have to enter some credentials to work with WVD Admin. So what we need is a tenant, an Azure tenant for sure, a service principle ID and a service principle key. A service principle is a functional account in Azure and let us start to create it. And it's all documented right here. So let me go to uh, my Azure environment, to my Azure tenant and select Azure Active Directory. And in Azure Active Directory, you can go to App Registration. In App Registration, you create or you can create service principles. Let us do this. Click on New Registration. Give it a new name. As we see, WD Admin Demo. And click on Register. After that, we have to configure the service principle to give the service principle permission to read users and groups in the Active Directory. To do that, we have to go to API permissions and we have to add to permissions. Click on Add Permissions. And what we need is the Microsoft Graph that is needed later to read users and user groups from the Azure Active Directory to assign this users or this group to applications. We need application permissions, that is important. And then we have to figure out directory or to select directory. And I go for directory read all. I want to have the permission for the service principle to read all Azure Active Directory objects. And we have to add another permission that is on the bottom, the Azure Active Directory graph. I select it. I go for the application permissions and the like directory read all. That's the same like the graph API, add permissions. After that, to allow the service principle to um, access this data, we have to grant the permission in the directory. I do that with grant admin consent for my tenant. Select yes. And then it's switched to green and then the service principle has the permission to read in the Azure Active Directory and in the with the Graph API. So to use the, um, the service principle, we need a service principle key that is like a password. I go for certificate and secrets and I select new client secret. I give it a name, key one, for example, and you have, you can select how long this secret will be um, usable. I go, in my case, I select one year. And now it's important to copy the secret. Copy to clipboard. Let me open my notepad to store it. Key, that is a key. And what we need as well is in the overview, we need the application client ID, that is the ID for the service principle. I copy it as well. App ID, that is that one. And the tenant ID. Tenant ID. 
is stored here shortly in my notepad. So that is good. The next thing what we have to do is we have to assign the service principal to the resource groups we want to handle with WWD admin or to the subscription. I would recommend to do it on a resource group level so that you can select this resource groups you want to manage with WD admin. You can do it on the subscription level as well, but then think about um, what that means. Then WD admin has access to all resources. I will do this in my demo environment on the subscription level because it is easier for me to show it. But you can do the same on the subscription level and um, on the resource group level. So in the subscription or on the sub on the resource group, there's access control. I select it and I add a new role assignment and I give, in my case, owner permission to the newly created service principal. There is the service principal I created. And I click on save. Let me mention you can, and that is also recommended, you can use contributor. That is enough for creating the most things. You can create virtual machine, you can access um, the host pool, the user session, and so on. Why I choose owner is the reason that if you want to assign a user or a group to an application in WVD, you need to be owner to do that. So that is why I go for owner in this case. And I'm sure you can you can use better permissions or only this permission you need on a resource group level. So I click on save and now I have my service principle ready. So let me go back to WVD admin. So first I copy the tenant ID into the field Azure tenant ID, then the service principal ID, and finally the key for the service principal. That's like the password. Here is one drop down box. And this drop down box you can select if you want to manage in WVD environment in the fall version, in the spring version, or in both version. I will show you today only the resources I have in the WVD spring version. So I select spring only, and then I click on save. Every time you change one item in the screen, um, like the feature release, don't forget to press save. So after that, I can click on reload all. And then I see the data I have in my subscription regarding WD and regarding virtual machines. If you have already deployed WD in the ARM version with the Azure portal, you will see the same resources in WVD admin like you can see in the portal. And that's a good thing that it uh, works on the same data, um, on the same data, on the same APIs. There's no database in the background um, which I use with WVD admin. So this takes a while and it just takes um, a little bit longer if uh, you make a screen capture. There are the resources. We can see two nodes. The first node showing you Azure resources, like virtual machine, images, scale sets, and so on. And the second node shows the WVD resources. So let me expand the host pools. And the host pools, I have one host pool. That is a host pool I created in the portal. So that is still there. And in workspace, there's a workspace uh, which I created um, in the Azure portal as well. 
So that are the resources we already have. If you don't have, or if you don't use the portal to create um, WVD resources, you can do it directly with WVD admin. I will show this later. But first, let us um, expand the host pools. And um, here are the session hosts I have, uh, in my case, uh, deployed for session hosts. And what we can do, we can uh, we can see the data from the set for the session host. We can manage the session host, and we can show the user sessions. Click on sessions V2. That shows you the active or disconnected user session in your environment over all host pools you see in WD Admin, and um, you can W can use WD Admin. To manage this users or this user session you can search for a specific user typing in some characters let me the lag user 707 then it filters directly this list and if you want to send this user a message and let me show it with another user I have this oh, this user is still connected that is this session and if you want to send this user a message, you can select the user, select this user session message to select. Hi, how are you? And works directly with the users. And the good thing is, if you want to send a message to more than one user, then you can do it. And you can select more users and do the same again. Message to selected users. Oh. Oh. And then this message is sent to all the users you selected in the list. Another way to manage users is you can, um, for sure, you can uh, disconnect the, the users, you can lock off users. And you can, if you want to do this, you can mirror a selected user or shadowing the user session. If you want to do that, you can click on this um, button. There's one prerequisite. You must be in the same network as this user. And then you can shadow or mirror the session and show and help the user directly. So you can interact in the same screen. Another way to manage session host is you can see the session host um, under the host pools. Or under the host pool, if here my my host pools, uh, my session host in the host pool, uh, I recommend to click on session hosts. Then you can see all your host pools in the list, and you can do the same, or or, or it works in the same way. Um, you manage uh, your user session. You can filter for a host. Dash four shows you um, the session host with uh, this uh, characters in the name. You can enable the drain mode, disable lock ons. This enables the drain mode for the session host. It goes to false, allowing your session false. And you can um, do the same with disabling the drain mode, which means enable lock ons. Then it should go to enable allow new session to true. I think the rest is clear. You can start a virtual machine, you can stop the virtual mach machines, you can restart and you can remove. Remove means you can remove the virtual machine from the list of the session host and you can also remove the virtual machine with all the things a virtual machine needs like a network card, or a disk. This will um, also be then removed if you select it. A cool thing, in my opinion, is you can um, run custom scripts or scripts on the virtual machines. And let me do that. Let me switch to logs. That shows what happens in the background. And if I want to do, for example, what can we do? We can run Windows updates on this virtual machine. That is the same, or the same happens if you log on to Rich Machine as an administrator and search for new Windows updates and then like then install. That ha that happens if you do this with this script. Let me do it for for one session host, run Windows update, run script. I have 
to confirm that I'm sure that I want to, that I want to update this virtual machine, I click on OK, and then it takes a while. It applies a script engine, which um, search for new Windows updates, install the Windows update, and after this, I get a message back, and then is a good um, a good point to restart the virtual machine to apply the newly installed Windows updates. And there are some other scripts you can uh, use. You can um, enable RDP short pass that um, use a script to set the registry settings and so on. You can install the Zipago Azure Monitor for WVD. That is what I recommend to, to do. Or you can build custom scripts. Custom scripts mean that you can um, edit a PowerShell script that is in the program file folder of WVD admin to run your scripts on your task you, you want to to um, to assign to one or all virtual machine or all selected virtual machine. The good thing is in this um, even I only have here a few sessions. And let me lock off one. I have only here a few sessions in my demo environment, but I know that this solution works for environment more than 16,000 sessions. So then, then it makes more sense to have here filters that you can um, search for a specific user maybe having a problem. So that is one. Now that are some part I want to show you in my first video about WVD admin. In the next video, I will show you how to build images which you can then use to deploy new session host for new host pools or for an existing host pool. So thanks a lot and I hope to see you in the next video again.